good evening friends uh, thank you for joining in uh, this evening hope you all had a good trading day uh, the topic as you may notice seems uh, quite controversial the man behind this is anything but controversial anish teli wrote this uh, topical article in economic times a few days ago which attracted my attention and i requested him whether i could discuss with him either on clubhouse or through spaces he said spaces uh, more important was he readily agreed uh, thanks for that anish mm. and uh, he said the he, he is the guest and i'm the host and uh, so he said the time limits uh, entry at 6 pm exit at uh, 7:30 pm stop loss only if uh, the space crashes uh, anish teli uh, uh, is a very popular figure on both uh, uh social media as well as in the mainstream media he writes uh, a lot of articles in various uh, newspapers and magazines uh, on economic matters uh he has worked with morgan stanley prior to starting his own uh, uh venture qed capital where he manages funds for family offices and ultra high net worth individuals uh, his style of investing is quantitative and systematic the same style he brings to his writings in et and other publications I am the host for this evening. My name is Vijay, also known as Sainik under my pseudonym. My claim to fame is that uh, I spent 30 years in the market, uh, survived, but yet not understanding anything significant. Maybe people like Anish, Prashant will help me understand it better. Uh, I have been an investor, trader, and an intermediary you know, for the last 30 years, and uh, now my aim is to. and my fond hope is to become anish's client under the uhni category that hopefully will happen by 2030 on the panel we had invited uh, pravin who is uh, who will join us a little later oh pravin is here yeah one minute one minute. let me just make a uh, speaker yeah uh, so while pravin joins uh, uh, let me introduce you to uh, uh, the other panelist uh, this is uh, tiger prashant sorry i not tiger prashant just prashant but he behaves like a tiger and bounces with all questions so probably like uh, tiger prashant because the only other tiger person i knew was tiger prabhakar who was a very great uh, actor in the kannada film industry uh prashant is uh, in my opinion one of the finest data geeks i have uh, met in my career he runs uh, portfolio yoga a semi registered uh, small case provider he has been in the capital markets for last 25 years he has been a broker at the bangalore stock exchange and more importantly he has been my friend for two decades uh, and uh, more more important is that his mother makes uh, great coffee uh, pravin is with uh, et and comes up with uh, fascinating insights uh, uh, into matters uh, of finance and uh, so i welcome all three of you uh, on the panel uh, the format uh, today would be a combination of interviews come discussion among the two panelists my role will be a meek one Uh, just asking a few questions uh, and uh, allow them to slot each other um, so after anish has been suitably slotted by the two tigers um, i will uh, open it to the audience not to worry anish i am there on your side uh, so we will basically cover five areas which uh, anish has detailed out uh, in his article and uh, i would recommend people to read the article i have sent a link this morning and uh, that should give you uh, the depth and understanding on this uh, subject uh, uh, of anish uh, so basically uh, let me take uh, each of them one i am going to quiz him on the current scenario uh, the second is on the past crashes basically is talked in that article and uh, the role of fed and uh, central bankers and um, what about india's fate and what are the time frame is looking at uh, so here is the article inflation high bond yields the 2020s are really like the 1920s uh, so anish i, I begin uh, by telling you that i have been negative on the market for quite some time several months and uh, in my uh, december uh, uh, predictions for the year 2022 everybody was making i thought let me also make and i pinned it i had expected a 20 to 30% uh, drop in the nifty for which i have been mercilessly trolled and uh, now i think i'll send the trollers uh, behind you uh, because you are now talking of something like 90% if you are think thinking 
we are going to replicate 1920s. The Dow Jones lost 89% uh, from the peak to trough in three years. So before I begin with serious questions, I just want to know, what are you smoking nowadays, Anish? Yeah, I'm going to blame this one on Praveen copywriters. You know, they unless the headline is sensational, Praveen tells me that you know people are not going to read it. So he said, "Ki thoda sa sensational likhna padta hai." Then and that reminded me of little bit of you know this uh, this uh, uh, this anecdote I heard about Sai Baba. So they so people used to ask him that Sai Baba, you do all this uh, magic tricks and all of that, and you know. Why do you do all? Why do you do all kind of stuff? You, you, I mean, when people come, you talk about spirituality. He said, one is for them and one is for me. So to, to do, do all, all of that, that to attract, attract them, so they come. come. Yeah. And then and after, after that, that, I, I give, give them, them what I have to give them. Absolutely. So the article is why, why it says. <laughs> even, uh, I think if you if you if you read the article carefully, I have given. It's basically a scenario analysis. Yeah. Of you know. What, what can, can happen, happen? Yeah. if the, the Fed, Fed loses control? control. Yeah. And uh, this started, you know, I, I keep having these discussions with Prashant. So I actually requested him to co-write the article. Uh, then Prashant started researching so much that, uh, you know, yeah. that, but, but, that but, the article we had this discussion here. But, yeah, but I think the basic content, his basic contention was that, uh, you know, if the Fed loses control, yeah. Then it's equivalent to a nuclear situation. Yeah, I think you mentioned and that in your article. Was, yeah, you mentioned yeah, that in your article. My, yeah, my, my contention, contention is it's not nuclear. nuclear. We've seen it before. It's a massive dislocation. But as nuclear is something what we are in the, you know, uh, edge of now if somebody were to, you know, put trigger happy and push their hand in the button. But, but uh, but, but not, not the Fed, Fed losing control. Okay. So yeah, so my my uh, sole point of uh, you know uh, disagreement with Prashant was uh, we agree on a lot of things. So you know we look for things so that we can disagree and have a have a <laughs> discussion. Otherwise, you know, like that Wrigley's chairman used to say, if three people in a group agree, then two of them are irrelevant. So you know, throw two people out. So I we are always looking for points to disagree on. And we are very happy when we find points that we disagree on. And this was one thing that I disagreed on. And so I said, okay, now, now, now let me go back and, you know, see what's happened in the past. And, you know, uh, 1929 is when the Fed actually lost control or they did something which was uh, counter to what they should have done. And uh, which is, the, the Fed came into being in around, I think, 1913 after there was a panic in 1907. And... Uh, in uh, 1929, in 1920s, World War ended. Uh, the soldiers came back home. Uh, there was the Spanish flu. Uh, factories, uh, ammunition and munition factories were retooled to form, uh, you know, these consumer factories. And uh, there was easy money policy. And the 20s uh, were, you know, a great time. The roaring 20s is what they were called, what I've said in the article. And... Uh, I think the peak was when Irving Fisher said that, you know, stocks have reached a permanently high plateau. And uh, that, I mean, people keep saying these things all the time. It's just that when when a top and a, and a, and a comment like that coincides, people sort of, sort of tend to remember those kind of things. So I think uh, poor Irving Fisher has become infamous for that quote of his. And uh, post that, the Fed tightened. In fact, after so 1929 actually was not that bad a year. It was the market was down 30 percent. 1930 and 31 is when the market went down another 70 percent. So those were the real bad years. 1929 is remembered for the beginning of the crash. Then Fed slammed uh, and went went in for tightening, and uh, we we got the Great Depression. Now. Uh, Fast forward to 2008, uh, we had Ben Bernanke who was, who's done his, uh, I believe, PhD on uh, the Great Depression or is known as a great scholar on the Great Depression. And so obviously when he was, uh, you know, he was the right man at the right place and he said, I'm not going to make the same mistake as the Fed did. So he pleaded with uh, Hank Paulson, who was the Treasury Secretary, to say that, okay, you know, we need to do something big because 
all these investment banks are falling one after the other and uh, they decided to get let lehman go thankfully to not morgan stanley others i would have, i would have been out of a job but uh, it was uh, lehman they decided to let go and they saw the repercussions of that and they decided okay uh, so hank paulson went to uh, nancy pelosi on bended knee and asked for a bazooka which he promised he would not use uh, you know that he said i just need to show people that i have the bazooka i am not going to use it but guess what at the end he he decided to use all of it and then uh, consequently uh, three other fed governors also decided to use the bazooka and we have qe4 in uh, 2020 so it, so i i mean i've always said that you know giving more stimulus uh, and not taking it back is like giving drugs to a drug addict uh, but uh, if you are a political appointee what what else are you going to do and so now and and the thing was that throughout the 2010 the uh, we have not seen too much inflation in the us and that is what kept the fed going saying that okay you know we are not seeing inflation so what's your problem and uh, the the uh, politicians said just go on with it and then we had covid and this time around uh, inflation appeared whether it was the, i mean the qe was four times what it was uh, we had eight trillion of qe say. so they sort of bloated their balance sheet by 4x and uh, this time around we got uh, inflation and uh, which they thought was transitory they thought if they just pretend uh, it will go away but this time it did not go away and now the fed is sort of caught between a rock and a hard place because uh, the yield curve that is uh, the us the difference between the 10 year and the 2 year is sort of flattening or uh, almost flattened and uh, that tells you that there is a recession on the horizon of course that's a necessary condition not a sufficient condition it does not mean 100% there is going to be a recession but it it sort of tells you that there is trouble in in us land uh, compounded by that is again now we have the uh, you know the ukraine russian crisis and that has its uh, you know another story of its own and what what repercussions it could have but uh, so basically i mean the ideal scenario for the fed is you know is to do like a ajay devgan you know he, like he entered in his movie fuller kate on two bikes uh, one on inflation and one on growth i don't know how they are going to balance that and uh, you know will they go so some now after the after the war i think the the expectations were were that pre pre uh, before the war the expectations were that 90% there'd be a 50 basis point hike in march that's gone away uh, i think now the consensus is there'll be like a 25 basis point hike and it may be just you know the first of maybe one or two hikes and then the fed will have to start cutting again and and sort of uh, print more money in face of an inflation spike and uh, you know that's the scenario we're looking at that's that's where we are so if the fed loses control in all of this tricky maneuvering and all of that then you know you, you could have a bad situation but not uh, i mean you lose control they lose control you know you, you may have a bad 4 5 years but it's not nuclear nuclear i can tell you what is nuclear nuclear is uh, joining morgan stanley in 2008 uh, you know where all your money is upfronted and you know they have promised to pay you uh, uh, over the next 5 years and then within within 5 months you don't know whether that company is going to exist or not uh, trust me you are within 1 dollar of sort of shutting down uh, what is even more nuclear on top of that is to have your office at the trident in 2008 and your usual hangout being the uh, being the coffee shop of the trident hotel but uh, a lucky escape that on you know the, in november 2008 uh, i was traveling that day i was in calcutta uh, and uh, luckily i was not there so so having seen some been through some of these situations you know this does not this does not appear to me as a as a nuclear situation uh what was bad was covid i think that was a serious uh, serious situation and we found a vaccine and we found a way, way out of it 2008 i thought was pretty bad but we found a way out of it so i think uh, i've uh, you know i've not seen as much as you vijay but uh, having seen uh, you know the dot com 2008 and 2020 now 
I think human ingenuity cannot be uh, countered. Human, the human spirit is uh, something that adapts to situations. Uh, unless there are nuclear missiles, actual physical nuclear missiles uh, flying all around you. That that is a that nuclear is situation. Yeah. Uh, okay, Anish. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the opening remarks. Uh, before I let the tiger uh, out, um, I'd just like to uh, introduce Abhishek, who is the co-host. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, uh, and uh, he will moderate the questions at the end of the uh, of the panel discussion. And uh, he's also a terrific uh, trader and from Bangalore. Prashant, you should meet him. Uh, so now, obviously, Prashant, you don't agree with uh, this uh, uh, opening remarks of Anish. So let me let you loose. <laughs> no, I mean, not that, look, I mean, end of the day, it's not like, I mean, economics is tough here. Yeah. I mean, macroeconomics is very tough enough to find that. You, can we even compare a decade of, I mean, like a 1929 versus today kind of thing? I mean, the differences are too huge kind of, in my opinion, there's way too huge differences. And we, I mean, for example, if you were to go back to 1929, the percentage of investors in the United States who are invested in the markets was less than 5%, like somewhat like India kind of thing. So the impact in itself of the crash was not on the India, I mean, uh, basically, the investors per se. Yeah, I mean, you can actually, I mean, if you Google, uh, you see that uh, car for sale, cash wanted today kind of thing. But basically that cash, I mean, the crash, I mean, as uh, Anish said, crash came over a period of time. Even though the first crash was 50%. I mean, the 1929 crash, the bot, I mean, the drawdown is as good as 50% kind of thing. But more importantly, should we even compare a 1929 to today? I don't agree because 1929 is a different to, I mean, you go back to 1929, you go back to, say, Europe. I mean, it was gold standard time, in terms of gold standard kind of thing. I mean, if you go back to how Germany got to, kind of a pulled into your World War One, not the World War Two. World War Two is a different game, ball game. And how their currency stumbled kind of thing because of the people's mistrust in the bank. Basically, people said, boss, I don't trust a German I mean, bank. So instead of a paper money, get me the gold. Because that was what was promised kind of thing at that point of time. And I mean, inflation is high, but again, inflation is, I mean, if you go back to say 2010 versus 20, the reasoning, the basic, what you say, differential between, uh, Fed has actually expanded big time. I mean, even in, I mean, if you want to put in percentage terms, forget the amount. But uh, 90, uh, sorry, 2010 did not uh, spread inflation because it was, it was, it spread inflation in terms of asset uh, inflation. But basically, it did not impact the uh, normal uh, life and uh, liberty kind of thing. If you want to, to take today, the, one of the reasons is basically huge amount of pumping has happened at, uh, what, what do you say, at the uh, retail level. I mean, six, I, I believe $600 or $800 were given basically as an unemployment uh, benefits for a pretty long period of time. I mean, people really, I mean, this was real, the, the real helicopter money in my opinion. I think it was around $5.2 billion or something of that, sorry, trillion kind of thing. 5.8 trillion. That was the relief spending that US government has done. So that that is actually that uh, I mean the whole inflation has I mean even before the Ukraine crisis, the inflation was because of the spread of money without actually I mean that once you spread money of the sort of uh, larger than the federal balance sheet, uh, it's at that point of time you are really uh, looking at some uh, huge spurt up in demand kind of thing, and then you had other crises. But 1929 was, I think, a very different scenario. I don't see, I mean, Fed losing control, for example. I mean, Fed being behind a curve or ahead of the curve is always played. I mean, Fed is, I mean, no central bank is always at correctly at the juncture kind of thing. But behind the curve is beneficial for the, I mean, the borrowers. Ahead of the curve is beneficial for the, I mean, the investors kind of thing. My, my person is that even though we are behind the curve, that is a, only option available. Basically, Fed is not looking at rising interest rates, not because it feels that, I mean, I personally, I still believe inflation is transitory. I mean, end of the day, once you, uh, all the, what do you say, incentives that were given has been shut down kind of thing. The free money that has been pouring out has nearly gone, gone over. So now it's more of uh, inflation because of the fact that all that money has already got sucked into the markets. But those, I mean, uh, one year later, you are already looking at the lag effect. You are already looking at a base effect kind of thing. My thought process is you won't see a huge inflation, which will, I mean, 
a interest rate hike in itself does not uh, cause a market crash i mean uh, for example if you go back to 1929 because that's the i mean scenario we're playing around in the uh, us actually hiked uh, mar- uh, margins for stock brokers kind of thing it was at that point of time that uh, resulted in a crash in march i mean the top out happened much more later march of 2029 market did crash because of the rising uh, margin pressure kind of thing but again continued one shake off and then continued kind of thing my top line i mean the reason what i was trying to argue with uh, say arish was that oh we we i mean wherever you have seen the central bank lose trust it, it's a end of the end of the game for that country kind of thing it's just no no i mean no second chances given kind of thing you take out i mean uh, you forget to uh, post uh, world war 1 of germany you go back pre world war 1 that reason to lose trust was because that i mean end, end of the day once you lost trust people don't believe that the value of money is the value that you proclaim kind of thing and then it's 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 a spiral it's a spiral that is not easy to contain kind of thing it's like the 1987 market crash it was not because suddenly market was really expensive and decided that one day i'll I mean, basically, clean out. It, it became a spiral, and once the spiral, in a special donut spiral, no one can control. But Japanese uh, banks, I mean, more or less, have lost the trust kind of thing. I mean, the trust is a key. For me, the trust is a key. If you think, I mean, if Fed loses trust, then, I mean, I, I don't see how you can regain. I mean, it's like Russia suddenly now today saying, "Boss, no, no, we are sorry. We can go back. We are now." let's go back to old business kind of i don't think that will happen kind of thing because once you lose that trust the question is what will you do next i mean there's no hard and written rule right that you will not do something else kind of thing so i mean i don't know i mean i am not that kind of, i mean i'm not a student of economics kind of thing okay okay thanks uh, prashant i think you put your points uh, fairly well and uh, uh, a good contrast to what anish said uh, pravin uh, would you like to chip in would you like to give the third dimension pravin are you there hello yeah can you hear me yeah 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 because i you know when this thing started i was like uh, driving so i just uh, came home so yeah here uh, so you know i, I have uh, so anish uh, wrote this piece and uh, uh, as usual i was the first person to read it okay and uh, the first thing is like uh, that came to my mind is okay all this is fine so what i mean like so what i mean like if 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 i'll just say if, if our reader is going to read this what does this mean to the reader uh, i mean like you are saying that uh, 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 1929 and 2022 are looking very similar what should the investor in this case how does how should he behave and that has been the question for him throughout this uh, entire article and uh, we have answered i mean the anish has answered that uh, question somewhere uh, okay i'm not going to okay i'll tell you so what anish uh, principally said is that if this is going to happen then you need to stack up on gold okay so now i will now since now we are in an open forum so i would now basically ask anish that you know this gold uh, as a hedge has always worked i just want him to basically uh, uh, tell tell me right now that that you know uh, is the is gold even at this point of time the right way to kind of go as far as hedging is concerned or even if we expect like you no know, because we're going to have a double whammy in terms of the us interest rates and uh, and an out of syllabus question which is basically the ukraine and russia war so is gold the answer for all our problems because gold is something that we are kind of like you no know, ignored it or we said that you know gold doesn't have an underlying and all so this is the question now is for anish to answer Go ahead, Anish. I I hope you don't put a gun to his head and say you answer now, otherwise, kind of thing. Now, you, now, I, I'm, you'll, I'm, you'll, you'll allow him to write an article, right, in the future. No, that, that answer it up, uh, to no, your satisfaction. So if he doesn't want to answer it and he wants to write a long piece, that is more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Anish, yours. Yeah, usually he says that no, no, don't answer, just write it down. So, <laughs> so I'm happy he's, he's uh, allowing me to answer. Okay, so let me just uh, you know. Uh, You know, a few days ago, I I don't know if I tweeted that uh, podcast uh, by uh, Grant Williams and Luke Groman. Uh, 
uh, you know it's a very interesting podcast where uh, where they're talking about that uh, something very uh, huge has happened uh, which is similar to what happened when nixon took the us off the gold standard uh, two weeks ago is when the reserves of the russian central bank were frozen in the us and the us said your dollars are not good anymore can you please take them away and uh, and you know what what are you going what are you going to do what so what what's the russian central bank going to do they're going to buy gold what and uh, you know what over the last uh, 7 to 8 years the debasement of the dollar has continued and central bank buying of gold has gone up by 8x Uh, if you look at uh, what the rbi has been doing also they have been doing that uh, so i was wondering about you know the 3 trillion dollars worth of chinese treasury that they're holding guess what the tri- the chinese have also diversified that uh, 3 trillion dollars of us treasuries by buying hard assets because they have borrowed against that 3 tri- 3 trillion dollars of treasury and bought high hard assets so uh, basically the us has realized uh, so this again you know you have to go back in history and look at petro dollars and why uh petrol was uh, or or oil was being uh, you know the power that the us got to accept payment in dollars and all over the world it became the standard and now it's slowly losing uh, that uh, hegemony and uh, and they want to get out of that because now they need to uh, you know uh, i mean the the yuan is overvalued because of that and they want to start producing again and if if the dollar always remains uh, you know uh, something like flight to safety they are not going to be able to get back they they blow out so actually what they want is people now not to uh, buy too many treasuries they don't want people now to uh, they don't want the central banks sort of to uh, you know buy too many us dollars they want them to diversify out of that and that is the bloated prob fed balance sheet problem that they are sitting on today in that situation what are you going to do you're going to buy hard assets okay uh, anish uh, okay let's uh, look at the other uh, points which you touched about the 87 crash and uh, the 2008 uh, with my limited understanding i feel 87 is uh, very much a hype kind of crash because it is almost like a flash crash which we saw in 2006 in india as well as in 2020 globally Uh, it came and it went and uh, uh, nobody was the wiser uh, one could always uh, find uh, reasons as to why the 2006 uh, may june crash happened and there is still no answers uh, index fell about 25% and uh, we had a down lock on one of those days uh, same thing about 87 though it fell 21% in one single day but if you really look at it it really didn't uh, uh, make much um, of a difference to the economy as such same thing with 2006 Uh, two to two and twenty uh, got gave the scare of the life to every one of us, but of course that was there was something else to that. So, who do you think? Who do you think that this is this is not eighty seven, is not twenty twenty, but this is more like two thousand eight and nineteen twenty nine are comparable, because two thousand also is not a, a great because it was only certain uh, segments were associated. Nineteen ninety two, though in India you forget because that is a completely different uh, issue. So. So would it not be like something like a 2008 where it uh, Dow Jones fell 50%, 54%, P fell 60%. So why are you going to uh, 1929, uh, which is much much more severe? I I know you made some points, but uh, just want to know in terms of markets, how how do you look at it? Yeah. So uh, why I said the 1929, not not 2008, was uh, is because of the uh, you know uh, the similarity of the rise. Uh, we already had a uh, sort of easy money but in uh, during the 2000s but it was not i don't think it was to the extent of uh, you know what we saw in the 1920s where uh, the uh, i mean the market was actually up i think eight times six six to seven times than it was we are whereas here we were up i think uh, from uh, i think the snp was around 600 gone to 4000 which is roughly comparable uh, on from 2008 to now so uh, like i don't know if how many people know about this and uh, you know prashant was saying all these of course the context and the backgrounds are always different but i don't know if you know about peter borish who is the uh, economist at uh, paul tudor jones's uh, outfit 
and he showed him the analog of the 1987 and 1929 uh, chart and he said that you know uh, this is what's going to happen paul uh, uh, incidentally george soros was there with paul tudor on that day and he happened to mention this to stan rakenmiller and stan rakenmiller took a look at the chart and said that uh, oh my god and he went and sold everything and uh, went short the market and made about 62% so sometimes the context will never be the same like pravin said you know they they uh, you know it's like a jazz song obviously things are not going to be the same you'll never get the same period in history again you know you even if you stand in a river the river is flowing no you're not the same person neither is the river the same so there is no equivalence however there is rhyming in certain aspects and the actions of the central monetary authority when faced with a crisis in 2008 there was enough room for the fed to cut rates we were at 4 4 or 4 and a half percent and they had already started cutting rates today when you are percent your yield curve in the future is telling you there is a recession coming your foot is already down on the pedal if you, how are you going to reflate that so i don't know If okay, uh, Prashant. Yeah, you know, yeah. Prashant, you have yeah, some answer to that. Sorry, sorry, I didn't get you. I leave it in terms of. You are already at zero percent interest rates. The future uh, yield curves are telling you that there is a recession coming. So what what are you going to do now? And in the short term, you are ten percent, uh, which is a forty-year high inflation. so as the as the fed governor what are you going to do now <laughs> i mean the fed governor has said they will do a 25 basis point hike which i don't know where i mean maybe they will do that kind of thing but my no my thought process is i mean look market crashes happen regardless of whether it's a what do you say for whatever reasons kind of thing i mean the reason may be different for each for i mean every fall has it to one excuse one narrative kind of thing market going up i mean is it for example one of the things uh, for i mean in uh, 29 for uh, you market went up quite substantially from 1942 onwards 1942 dow jones the bottom down on what uh, the second i have the chart in my near the 100 mark and then yeah, yeah. Top... no no i i got that but i'm saying what what is the fed's options i think we are looking we are doing a scenario analysis and we are saying what happens if the fed is in control what happens if the fed loses control now Which, i mean are, no, fed Yeah, I mean, I, I, the I, market perceives. I mean, lose by losing control is market. The the market only perceives the Fed to be in control. There is a perception that they have. I mean, okay, let's assume the Fed day. I mean, you you believe you disbelieve that the Fed day is lost. I mean, let's assume we believe that the Fed has lost control, and you say, okay, what what's the alternative? You go to hard assets. What it will do is just. I mean, basically, I mean, there's no that, that much. I mean, it's like nickel kind of thing. You will suddenly have a hundred percent up kind of thing. But that's not something that is sustainable. And all I mean, the, I mean, the only way you can uh, what do you say? I mean, for example, why do I mean the government loves so uh, low interest rate? For example, because they are the biggest borrowers one, and they don't want recessions because end of the day, being a democracy, you're always asked to. I mean. People vote upon their current current circumstances, not based upon how good you are in the longer term. Based upon how good you are at a current juncture, kind of thing. So no, I mean uh, pain. I don't think uh, Fed can. I mean, does I mean, for example, raising interest rates is a forcing of pain, kind of thing. It's like I raise interest rate to ensure that there is a drastic drop in demand, which also means ensures that a demand drop means your prices drop and your inflation uh, goes down. But that pain. I don't think that I mean uh, any government of these days wants to take that pain. I don't. I mean, I don't know the end. To be honest, I don't know the end game kind of thing. I don't know how this end uh, end will play. But at the same time, this can continue for my thought process is it can continue for a much longer period than what we assume. I mean, we are talking about in days and months and years kind of thing. Fed can actually push the ball much the. What, sorry, Fed can actually push it, push the ball much much further kind of thing and. Yeah, I mean market. I don't know, man. Market may actually let's say you market will do nothing for next two years, kind of thing, or get down a bit, kind of thing. But overall, that doesn't change the fact that US dollar will still be supreme. I mean, my point is that US dollar will be supreme because there's no alternative. 
I mean, Euro was supposed to be alternative when it came back kind of thing. It is not. China has never been going to be alternative. I mean, after the current Ukraine crisis, one of the reasons I am thinking that uh, China tech is being so, hit so hard because now the market feels that um, China is never been going to be a replacement. I mean, it's always going to be in a catch-up territory. And I mean, you, it's it's like the German of uh, nine, I mean, nineteen before the World War One, wherein they were strong, but not uh, not strong enough to overcome the challenges kind of thing. So I don't think there's a I mean, I don't. There's no. I don't have a answer to the question whether what's the, what's the alternative or what the Fed may do kind of thing. But I don't think the Fed will actually make it worse than what it is actually already been. I mean, you by making it worse, it the solve solve a problem won't get solved. I mean, it just makes the. I mean, you are like uh, may uh, pushing it in a different direction. Yeah, but I mean, there's a limit to what you can push, right? You are at. Twenty percent or thirty percent of debt to GDP now you're at one hundred and twenty-five percent. At some at the two years already at uh, some uh, you know one seventy-five to two uh, two hundred basis points. So at some point in time the market is not going to believe that kind of thing. Your uh, yield will go out of control. That's what is called going out of control, which we have already got a little bit of taste of that. Sorry, Anish, can I ask you a question? Yeah, um, it, it, just uh, yeah, uh, let, let's complete this one round, Neil, please, if you don't mind, because I got another two points uh, to uh, ask of Anish and uh, Prashant, and then we will come back. We have got enough uh, uh, time. I leave yeah, enough time. Uh, Vijay, I think you can ask your question. I think we'll because yeah. Okay. Go you on, want to on. take Neil's question? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm sort yeah. of starting in. Um, but basically, you know, what about emerging markets? I mean, if you think of the BRIC countries. It's been around 20 years since the term "brick" was coined. Apart from India, all of the returns have been uninspiring. Uh, none of them look pricey in terms of valuations. Russia is basically, uh, I mean, the value has collapsed. So, how similar is are those to 1929? Well, so Russia has collapsed before also in 19, not not too far ago, uh, 1998. They collapsed. Uh, they defaulted on the debt. That took LTCM down. Uh, so i don't i mean bricks was coined by jim o'neil of goldman and you know it became like a big term now the r has disappeared uh, you know brazil i don't know where they are china is is far ahead and bigger than the others and india is where india is so uh, so you know the russia, uh, russia defaulting is not such a uh, such an event that we've not seen it we've seen it in 1998 and that that caused this location when uh, central bank had to get together now uh, just getting back to prashant's question on what is the alternate the alternate is that there could be a basket of currencies which could be a mix of the euro the usd and the and the chinese yuan which uh, central banks will settle among themselves and slowly uh, you know have gold reserves to back them up and uh, sort of get to be slow painful adjustment because if i mean it's a truism in the market that if you have borrowed from the future you will have to pay it back in what kind of valuations are we talking about today in terms of you know the the nifty 50s of the 70s uh, that you know enough has been said about that uh, again we'll get into a separate discussion <laughs> if we get into that but uh, you know there has to be adjustment there has to be safety valves along the way uh, to let out these excesses that build up in the market otherwise it just blows up like 2008 keep kicking the can down the road i don't think the fed is powerful enough or they have or i think they've used up enough of their firepower um, that they have uh, over the years i mean it's been what 14 years now since 2008 okay uh, uh, last two points uh, uh, okay i think neil talked about uh, uh, you know the emerging markets let's speak specifically of india what do you think will happen so uh, we are far more coupled than we were in the 1920s so in the 1920s the only parallel we have is the uk market uh, which is functioning of course we had the bombay stock exchange but i don't know how how uh, relevant it was or we don't have data on that but the uk market took a beating and uh, i think i've written about how uh, keen who was uh, invested throughout that period uh he also he was caught uh, blind sided but he sort of recovered again and over a period of you know uh, that two decades he did uh, pretty decently so now we looked at the uh, you know the correlations the thing about correlations is they are not stable 
but uh, one thing you can say that uh, is that directionally they are quite stable now it can be something like you know somewhere between 0.6 or 0.9 the period we looked at uh, in the last uh, 10 12 years uh, the r square was around uh, uh, you know 0.9 which is like fairly fairly high and even today like uh, i mean you look at it sgx uh, nifty if people are looking at sgx nifty and it's completely mirroring the dow when it uh, happens rarely on a day like you know some if you have a budget or if you have a, something of that sort then it sort of decouples for a couple of days or something otherwise they're living in together there's no uh, there's no decoupling there i mean there's no place to hide in the in emerging markets if uh, the us equity markets take a take a hit so what you're saying is so as goes do so goes india yeah so like i said in the article are the sensex has a thing for the jones boys so So they, they, I mean, very coupled. Pravin, you got some other uh, perspective on this, Pravin? No, no, I uh, don't have any perspective. I just think that uh, that whatever Anish says is wrong. <laughs> whatever Anish says is wrong. Hello? Yeah, yeah, he said whatever I said is wrong. <laughs> Why? Hey, he's the uh, guest, yeah. Please treat him with respect. Pravin, why am I wrong? <laughs> uh, why is he wrong, Pravin? Setting the cat among he actually has a cat, so he's setting the cat among the pigeons. Okay, okay. Uh, Prashant, what about your view, Prashant? Think Pravin is wrong. Yeah, Pravin, you're saying we can't hear you, Pravin. I think you're on mute or something. Okay. Prashant, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. So you have a different perspective, Prashant. No, no, no. Sorry, there was a there was a connection between a WhatsApp call. Now you can hear me. Right? I cut that call. There was some problem out there. Okay. Why are yeah, you I disrespecting know. the guest? Why are you? No, 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 no. I have this. There is no more than more than your guest. More than your guest. He is our columnist. I can do that. Okay. I don't understand that. Okay. No, no, no. no. It is just so, in light of it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what I meant was that you know, uh, 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 I mean, like uh, to some extent, uh, the entire scenario is so depressing. That is what I meant. That you know, he has written in that article that I hope I'm wrong. Like you know, <laughs> so so I am saying that I also hope that he is wrong uh, in the sense that uh, uh, I mean, see, we have had such good two years, right? And uh, you also believe that you know, in, since December, you are saying was. Good things don't last for like this for long. After years and years, like you can't see markets going up and up and up. But uh, uh, you know, we have had uh, you know uh, in 1920s, we have seen the Dow Jones in by 1932 fall by 89 percent in three years' time. Okay, uh, I hope and uh, that I don't see any logic that it will happen now that the markets can fall to that extent. But yeah, uh, I feel that uh, that we are in a year or two of like you know not so great returns, and uh, and uh, and and the fact that many people said, remember even in last year month actually people were saying that India has nothing to do with the international market. If I have to go cut, then Indian uh, uh, SIP is who all the public will lift up the market and all. So I think that uh, all those theories are theories. The fact is that. Uh, we are a very much coupled market and uh, and uh, if if the us market is going to be in trouble let us say that we we can't escape this so i guess like you know some of us have been like cry, saying that this is not a uh, i mean this year is not going to be that great and uh, we just hope that you know it doesn't fall big time that you know so called or so many new investors have come in the month of december itself that they get so scared that they don't come for the next 5 years so that is my only uh, hope yeah, yeah yeah thanks pravin uh, prashant the last word to you no no i mean i think uh, i mean i don't know yaar i, I do, my person for top process is that we are not at a precipice kind of thing like uh, basically if you look at forget the 1929 i mean you go back to the peak of uh, japanese bull market 1980 I mean the valuations were crazy. Valuations are not crazy today. Valuations are, I mean, basically market are relatively very cheap. I mean, you are earnings are growing, and finally, I mean, for example, let's take the pro post. I mean, everyone is too concerned about the post COVID rise. 
saying that bust is too much too fast kind of thing so the market has to crash my thought process is a lot of things have changed for, for example i uh, i have a we have a tenant who is a, a kind of a msme kind of thing he says that i mean all the self crushed but at the same time the uh, what do you say and the industry is growing i mean what is happening is a lot of consolidation has taken place kind of thing yeah i mean it, it's a i mean the, there is a economic theory called case style recovery kind of thing wherein the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer kind of thing but basically my thought process is that we are not i mean we are not at a way, uh, place where even in 1929 it was i mean you i don't for uh, 1920 i still don't think it's the right way to compare but we are not at a way where we were at a history compared to any of the peaks major peaks of history maybe a minor peak i mean in the market fell uh, 20 30% in 2006 for example without much of uh, i mean we were actually having a very gala time kind of thing and still the market fell so i mean a market crash i for me has nothing to do with uh, whether the fed has lost control I mean, for me market make not crash but maybe i mean more of I, i'm still looking forward to a more of a time based correction was our such a price based correction but at the same time i don't see i mean the new investors coming in or all i mean to me are not reasons for the market to crash i mean new investors are coming in for example the ipos they already lost a lot of money it's not like they i mean lot of them are losing a lot of money kind of thing but that that happens every time it's the, it's a cycle kind of thing 80% i mean it's like the pareto principle 80% of the money i think is made by 20% of people so i my my thought process is that we are not anywhere close to a major market peak kind of thing yeah some uh, maybe correction may happen because there is too much of negative but all the negativity is already we are we know the negativity it's not like the negativity is suddenly coming in kind of thing uh, and i'm uh, valuations per se i don't see a reason for a big crash to happen okay so so what is your worst case scenario 20% at max 20% max okay fine the final uh, uh, point we will uh, look at uh, anish uh, before we throw it open to the question answer session and free for all uh, okay we he says 20% you say 80% i am sitting at 30% uh, no no i am so, not saying 80% yeah okay you are you are certainly not saying uh, 20% okay you yeah, are saying something yeah, 50% let's say yeah it, something 50% yeah, if we get a worst case scenario yeah and uh, pravin if it goes to 50% uh, will you still take him as a com- uh, columnist uh, of course yeah of course you'll take him as a column okay last one is uh, uh, <laughs> last one is uh, anish uh, okay uh, let's assume uh, your uh, scenario building comes uh, true uh, pravin says you should be wrong i also feel you should be wrong uh, and uh, of course prashant uh, is very sure you will be wrong so uh, feels- yeah uh, every uh, prashant says you will be wrong okay Uh, so so now i want to know okay let's say your worst case scenario what is the time frame do you think will it be just like 29 uh, 30 uh, 34 i think no 29 to 34 is when the worst period was there so do you think it will be like that or it will be completely different what is your uh, what is the scenario you have built it no so uh, you know this is just a uh, thought experiment that we were doing as you know my my style of investing is completely quantitative so you know uh, i am invested and i we are we have some some amount of cash now because the market moved on and we had to get into cash to an extent but i mean we are going to follow the market that's as clear as that now coming to this uh, you know uh, when could this happen this could happen uh, in the next 6 uh, months it could happen in the next 12 months or like uh, you know prashant says you know we could uh, uh, us could become like japan for third and we as become a zombie for the years i personally don't think that happens because because uh, the demographics and the uh, you know the characteristics of us is very different from japan so i don't think they become a japan but uh, because they they tend they're more much more capitalist in, in that sense so they will sort of uh, ne- not become a zombie market they will take some action and something will happen in my out of it but uh, yeah it could happen in the next uh, couple of years if uh but i think we are reaching at uh, i i won't say that i disagree with prashant when when you say that we are not reaching some kind of uh, you know uh, tipping point uh, mainly because inflation is increasing month on month in the us let's not forget that uh, people are feeling that feeling the pinch now uh, like he rightly said that before, before this there was asset inflation and people were happy with that that was creating a wealth effect 
now when there is price inflation your gas is uh, you know the big thing about the us is they hit uh, you know gasoline prices uh, at a high and uh, you know you, even if you are into uh, ev and if you are into all of that where does all that electricity on the grid come from it still comes from uh, hydrocarbon it's just that you don't pollute the city but where does all that manufacturing and uh, you know energy for manufacturing energy for uh, recharging cars energy for all of that where does it all come from it comes from uh, fossil fuel so i mean uh, at some point in time the fed will i don't know what the fed's uncle point is uh, you know at which they will say ouch and you know that you know going to listen to you joe biden anymore if we have to hike we have to hike and uh, or if we don't have to hike and we so the the podcast i was referring to you know by grant williams and luke groban their scenario i'll tell you what their scenario is their scenario is that the fed will not hike uh, at best they will do a 25 basis hike uh, or a 50 basis hike over two parts and then they will print more money till till the cows come home and take it from there that's that's their scenario okay fantastic uh, fantastic uh, i have completed whatever i had to ask uh, uh, thank you anish for answering all these questions and uh, thanks you uh, thank you prashant for being like a tame tiger today a caged tiger i would say and uh, praveen of course uh, gave some different perspectives thank you very much on that now we'll throw it open to uh, questions uh, from anybody in the audience uh, as i said before abhishek will take care of uh, moderating it uh, abhishek uh, just kindly go ahead and um, uh, anish says uh, 7:30 is the hard stop uh, and i must also confess that i am in severe problem with my connection i don't know i'm not able to see anybody excepting myself here uh, so nevertheless uh, i will be a mute spectator uh, so abhishek all yours yeah uh, so i just wanted to point out a few things uh, my two cents so uh, there is there is some kind of dichotomy in terms of uh, whether the indian indices have been following the dow jones or any other global indices or not uh, just one thing that uh, i would like to i have seen personally is that uh, when you compare let us say your uh, nifty it index to your nasdaq so uh, the nasdaq has gone up by about 1.2 to about 145% if i'm not wrong that ballpark estimate uh, whereas from the covid bottom while your uh, nifty it index has gone up by about uh, 235 to 40% so where the money was being printed in the us seems like uh, everyone likes india much more than the us <laughs> the asset prices have got up much much higher in india compared to what it did in the us so this is one observation which i had so and, and of course logically what uh, you would one would say is whatever goes up fast faster than something else has to come down faster than the faster than it went up so that is not yet being observed in india in terms of the it index at least just one sector i am picking up uh, there could be similarities in other sectors as well and uh, i think i have uh, some kind of logical reasoning as to why uh, this is not why why the, the it index is not yet falling as much as it should one of the things which i feel is uh, your mutual fund nnvs prop up, prop up so we they had a very good two years and uh, if, if they if they do show two two years of uh, great returns from let us say till march 31st of this year that's when the financial year ends uh, your uh, mf fund managers must be getting some uh, amazing bonuses and all that so of course they they would make an effort to keep it higher because uh, bulk of the returns in the nifty as well as uh, your uh, in in the in their in their own funds has come from the it index because uh, that is where the bulk of the returns have been made uh, this is this is what i would think uh, is uh, happened but yeah anyway if anyone would like to respond please go ahead Yeah, Abhishek. Actually, uh, I I'm not sure if it was my connection, but we couldn't hear you uh, clearly as you were making your point. Yeah, it was wonderful to hear. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, now, Abhishek, okay, you can go ahead. Abhishek. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. What should I? I mean, uh, I didn't. I mean, I, I. Is there a question that was there? Uh, no, no, there was no question. Just your remarks. Hey. See, uh, 
I, I just look at things very simply, right? If I'm a person going to a store, uh, I buy the stuff which gives me the best value for money, the, cheap, the best deal, right? It's not about the value, but the best deal, right? And I think India offers the, uh, a very bad deal at this moment of time. Uh, there was an argument back in 2008 where India's return on equity was very high. It was substantially higher than emerging markets. Uh, so it deserved the premium. Uh, the premium was about 70% on the PE. Uh, today, India's premium is pretty much there. And uh, India's ROE is not very different from the rest of emerging markets. In fact, India's ROE is probably as much as the US. The question is, uh, in, a, in a globalized world, uh, why would somebody invest in India if in the US I get similar ROEs, better price to earnings multiple, uh, uh, a 2% annualized cash uh, buyback by corporates in the uh, SNP, which will give me some, and no currency risk, right? And plus an economy uh, like US, which is more innovative, uh, almost everything that we use in India on the tech side is US for, uh, by, by some means or the other, simple. So I think uh, from a foreign investor point of view, there is absolutely no reason for them to be invested in India. It's a myth that India is a great, uh, a growth story because the problem is that in the last four or five years we have not really been able to increase the size of a consumption class a consumption class has remained at 25 million people for the last five six years the only thing that is adding consumption to this class is the it services sector but even that is adding about 500,000 people a year this year so from that standpoint of view it's a very small consumption class and so india's growth story is all about a narrative by in a, you know some institution uh, you know professional investors but in in reality it doesn't exist because and i'll give you one interesting data point right we keep harping about our gst growth being superb if you actually adjust the gst growth over the last two years the gst growth CAGR for the last two years has only been seven percent for the last seven months that's it a seven percent CAGR on a two-year basis is quite uh, low if you would consider that the wpi is actually at 13 14 percent so in, in volume terms, actually, we are negative. So, I mean, that doesn't speak loads. Now, now, when I talk about GST, I'm talking about specifically SGST and CGST. The problem with the market is that everybody looks at SGST, CGST, and IGST. IGST is not, is an intermediate uh, GST. It is generated at either at imports or it is generated at uh, inventory. It is not the final end uh, sale. So that is the mistake that people are making by looking at the GST numbers. Right. I mean, I think corporate credit itself tells you that despite such high inflation, corporate credit is only growing at 6%. What does it say? That the volume growth is actually still negative. So I don't see any reasons that the Indian economy is healthy. It is quite weak and our valuation premium doesn't justify it, period. That's very well put, very well put. Uh, next yeah, yeah. Anish, should you, uh, no, one minute. Anish, should you like to respond? Anish or Prashant? I think we have Viraj, uh, you know, who would be perhaps more suited to uh, answer more on the fundamentals. I, I've been, not been looking at fundamentals that closely for a number of years now. So, uh, Viraj, do you want to take that? I am. Uh, see, I can, I can take that. See, two, three things here. Uh, on the GST front, if is um if uh, sk and and i don't know him but happy to take that so if you look at gst uh, net of igst that he mentioned if you take out the first three months but and then start looking at it the number looks slightly different also uh, the number is is actually uh, double digit and wpi that he's talking about is actually a recent number uh, on one side if you're taking igst uh, sorry, uh, GST, um, you're taking two years, but WPI is you're taking only one year. So either you have to compound both or you have to compound, like it has to be apple to apple. Then you have to look at, look at WPI for two years, which would be closer to seven and a half, eight percent compounded. Uh, so then you do not have a negative uh, a volume growth over a two year period. You actually have a positive uh, growth over a two year period. So that is one thing I would like to answer, yeah. And and on and on, and on IT index, I agree. I 
my only thing is that abhishek i don't think few fund managers can actually control an it index as such because uh, it index is a very large index with large free floats uh, managed by like, and with like lakhs of crores of uh, free float yaar so if we i mean just infosys would have 7 uh, 8 uh, lakh crore of free float yaar so if you genuinely think that few fund managers sitting in bombay can control that i uh, i don't know i i find it a little implausible yeah okay so point point well made yeah, abhishek i have one one more question for viraj uh, you know what's your viraj what's your take on uh, the roes that sk is talking about that roe is coming down and they're not as attractive as before and uh, and also on you know in terms of valuations are we uh, attractive enough yeah so whenever you look at the roe and valuation at the bottom of the cycle they will look uh, both will look much worse off than what they actually are so <clears throat> i think i think roe is right uh, cyclically adjusted um, our roe has fallen uh, but it is also a function of a lot of npa write offs uh, that we have taken um if you were to adjust for that um uh, but then the counter argument to that could be that you know the metals and material companies are seeing significant roe higher roe than what they were seeing in the past so i think over a over a decade and and i'm just talking from numbers perspective or over one and a half decade roes have fallen but what we should also understand is that cost of capital has also fallen the equity is valued based on the difference between roe and cost of capital our cost of capital at least as of today now you can argue that we can have multiple rate hikes and i have no view on it going forward um that where will be india's cost of capital to uh, two years out um but the spread between that cost of capital uh and roe has has actually been pretty decent and that has not uh, gone down and which is the real valuation driver of an equity uh, on a i would say on a broader uh, basis sk i i hope that essentially answers your question yeah yeah it does thanks viraj thanks yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you uh, thank you viraj uh, i think okay, uh, next up let's have a challenge yeah. sir let's have a challenge sir Okay, okay, you were about to say something. Ah, uh, Shah, sir. Oh. Only. Okay. ये जो विराज भाई बोल रहे हैं, वो कुछ समझ में नहीं आता है. WPA बढ़ गया अभी. तो GST भी अपने को Actually, I'm not able to speak properly. I'm sorry. Is there a problem with the mic, uh, Shadat Bai? Ah, uh, there's some problems. Some problems. Problem. Sir, एक बार बाहर जाके आ जाइए वापस तो ठीक हो जाएगा. नहीं 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 बोलने का प्रॉब्लम है इट्स नॉट टू डू विद ओके ओके सर एसके यू आर सेइंग समथिंग एसके गो अहेड या अभिषेक आई जस्ट वांट टू नो इफ आई गो आउट एंड कम विल देयर बी एनी प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ आई एम नॉट एबल टू सी एनीबॉडी एक्सेप्टिंग थ्री और फोर So I think you'll have to just uh, exit the app and come back because that uh, crash just keep happening. Okay, I'll exit and come back. Yeah, I scanned. Meanwhile, you can go ahead. Let's get it. Ah, sorry, sir. I pulled you.
Okay, yeah, tiger. Tiger is the one who was requested just now. You can go ahead. जी गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन थैंक यू माइक देने के लिए शुक्रिया साथियों हाँ साथियों टॉपिक है दो हजार बाईस इजली सब टू टू अच्छा तो फिलहाल में सभी फॉलो कर दीजिए मैं सभी को हंड्रेड परसेंट फॉलो बैक दे रहा हूँ थैंक यू अभिषेक आई थिंक जस्ट नीड टू चेक पीपल्स Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure that. I'll make sure that next step. I think you just need to send this person. I think uh, Kirit Mandral sir is there. I'm just going to invite him as a speaker. If you could join in, sir. Yeah, yeah. I I have joined, but I I'm seeing only my face. Anyway, okay. Let me uh, listen. No problem. Okay. Yeah, you continue, Abhishek. Continue. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir. I'm just waiting for uh, people to request. Trade-off, please. Yeah, what I wanted to understand, uh, you know, from uh, somebody who spoke on GST, is that uh, do you think that uh, GST uh, uh, will get impacted? Uh, you know, there will be further rise in the in the collections now that BJP has a. You weren't audible in between. Can you repeat it again? Hello, am I audible to everyone? So basically, I was. Uh... Okay, uh, Kirit Mandal, sir, you can go ahead, please. Uh, there's a lot of issues. Yeah, I'm sure you're able to speak. Yeah, yeah, I'm able to. I'm able to. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Kirit sir is there? Kirit Pandral sir? Yeah, Kirit sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, you are audible, sir. Yeah. Well, I am a price action trader, so it would be right on my part to comment on the fundamental aspect what Anish was just speaking. But just to give a general perspective, markets do look tough going forward. and i don't see the kind of level or comparing to 1929 thing you know uh, it doesn't seem like next to impossible so i mean none of the stocks are moving even in terms of momentum you see in spite of good numbers none of them are featuring up you have metals which are rallying with the rally the short lived my best estimate is that probably the next 4 to 5 months time are going to be really tough both that probably the scenario can change but as we all know crystal ball gazing doesn't work in market so i think the best option is just go with the flow just go with the price the tide may turn and when the tide turns i mean the market is never going to tell you when it's going to turn so that's the best strategy i would go with thank you that's it yeah abhishek can you pull up this cg at fiduciary guy cg at fiduciary can you send me a request CG, uh, so that I can tell you where you are. Where 
you know that's why i don't, don't like to do spaces clubhouse is much more stable uh, here i'm just not able to see anybody i think ashish has requested you can just uh, ashish mehrotra please um yes please uh, am i audible yeah sure thank you thanks uh, thanks abhishek for uh, taking my question um i just wanted to understand uh, uh, one or two things one is that is it uh, the right time or i am not sure if i should say right but is it the time to hold money in cash and not invest anywhere um except of course the sips etc which are going so basically what i want to know is that should you curtail on discretionary spending um and uh, just keep the money in cash um and uh, considering whatever is going on and the situation which is very dynamic and changing every day um what are the views on uh, inflation thank you anish or prashant would you like to take the question please mr uh, mr anish teli no anish you can just take the question from ashish first ashish yeah yes i think he asked about inflation expectation so i think uh, i mean even the so the fed does a dot dot plot or something that they call you know they they release that and that sort of gives a view of what the fed is thinking but you know even that like uh, kiran bhai just said that you know there's no use crystal gazing and uh, if you're not a full time investor if you're not a full time trader i would say don't try and time things too much uh, just uh, you know have your in- for you investing is a means to an end so you know uh, get your goals in place get your uh, you know get your financial advisor to sort of plan that for you and continue with that don't uh, you know get caught up in i mean these are things that you know we we make up these things like you know one of my favorite characters from margin call we've not invoked anybody from margin call uh, today but john turley says that you know money is things that you just has pretty pictures on it so that we don't kill each other for food things that we exchange and uh, you know in markets people like me vijay prashant pravin you know it's a it's a uh, job we have to create some narratives we are human beings we are storytelling animals uh, you know morgan housel writes brilliantly about how we tell stories and how we learn through that but if you're not a full time investor you're not a full time trader don't get into uh, you know too much analysis beyond uh, beyond the points because that will just uh, you know uh, a phrase we used to use analysis paralysis that it will just leave you paralyzed with it. and today there's so much information comes and misinformation comes it's it's tough to sort of for even uh, full time investors to figure out what is noise what is signal so so don't uh, you know try and think about these big things too much um sure thanks uh, can you please answer my first question as well that was about discretionary uh, you said that should you go in cash or that that's what your question was uh, yes that's right yeah that, yes, that, that's what i answered that saying that you know don't try, try and time things to to find it because uh, nobody can so if you are not a full time i'm sorry i don't know if you're a full time investor or not i'm assuming you're uh, you're not and if uh, from the tone of the question so if you're not a full time investor if you are if you have surplus money to deploy uh, you have your sips going on uh, i would say just say that you know uh, sit, if you have money for 5 to 7 years deploy that in the market if you're not going to need it uh, for the next 5 uh, to 7 years you can take risk with that kind of money anything that you're going to need in the next 3 to 5 years i would say take very little risk with that money you know the us had a lost decade between 2000 and 2010 the snp was where it was in 2010 the nasdaq took 13 years to come back to where it was and that's not happened i'm not talking about 1929 i'm talking about 2000 so 10 years is not a long time in market but 10 years is is you know 25% of your uh, of your sort of uh, career so in in a person's lifetime it's a long time so so if a long winded answer and non answer but i would just say that just focus on your goals and invest accordingly sure thanks yeah uh, next to equity learner 
Yeah, this is a question for Anish. I was reading your profile and this says that you are a quantitative and systematic trader. Uh, just can you give an example, how do you stock select and how what kind of uh, investment uh, patterns do you have? Like in this kind of turmoil market and this kind of turbulence, what kind of investments and what kind of uh, trades you take? Just uh, an example, if you can just uh, shoot here. So I, I am what call a factor-based investor i look at uh, these investment factors which are primarily so they are nothing but investment styles like value growth momentum uh, low volatility uh, it's just that we quantify them and we code them into systems and uh, and we follow those systems so we so basically whatever is a thought process we put that into a system and and we run that system so i for my investing purpose, I, I I use momentum and low volatility combined, so that you know that gives you a, a nice uh, combination of uh, something that is that is strong as well as something that is moving consistently. So that's broadly how we look at it. And an example would be say uh, a very simple example is that you look at something that has done well over the last uh, six to twelve months, and uh, then you rank it by performance and then you buy the top 10 or 20 stocks. We, we basically are, I think the the difference between, uh, you know, uh, a discretionary investor, which I was 10 years ago, uh, is that we're not trying to pick stocks, we're trying to construct portfolios. So I think that's where the difference lies. We don't know which, what is going to be the next Bajaj Finance, we don't know what is going to be the next HDFC Bank, we don't know what's going to be the next title. But we're pretty sure that if, if uh, you know, we are running a system, at some point in time, something like that will uh, sort of come into our portfolio and we'll hold on to that. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, just to inform people, uh, uh, Anish says he'll be here till 7, uh, 7.30. Uh, hard stop is what he calls it. Uh, so we've got another 13 minutes. Okay. Uh, we have two more questions. We can go on for another five ten minutes. Abhishek, we also uh, I, I got a message saying to in, to invite uh, Mr. Nitin Dharmawat. I think he's in the audience. So somebody said that please invite him up to speak. I think Nitin is also okay. Uh, let me just check. Observer and commentator on markets. Hello. Uh, yeah, right. You can just go ahead. Okay. Nitin, uh, what was the name? So, uh, my name is Ryuk. Uh, yeah, I wanted ahead, to ask, uh, okay, I'm a student and uh, I'm stuck in Havels uh, at uh, 1340 and I don't know what to do because uh, so many people telling me that market going to down, going to till I think 7,000 and I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I Should I average? So, please guide me if you can. Thank you. I think uh, stock specific questions we would uh, like to not answer because of. Uh, oh, it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, though. Uh, anyway, so uh, next, I think CG wanted to speak. You can uh, go ahead. Yeah, CG at Fiduciary. Yeah. Thanks, uh, uh, Abhishek. Uh, thanks for pulling me up. I think there was some technical glitch. Anyway, um, yeah, Anish, you've written a, uh, I think you've written an excellent article as a risk manager and uh, highly appreciated. Having said that, you also mentioned that Fisher as an economist got it wrong uh, in the beginning of the de uh, Great Depression. And we all know that what happened with LTCM, it was founded by two Nobel laureates. They were economists. And they got it wrong. And I think uh, they bet against the Russian currency in 1998 or something happened and uh, it got busted, LTCM. And there were two Nobel laureates of economics or something like that. So we know in history th uh, that many people, analysts and even economists, uh, can get it wrong also at times. Um, uh, but at this point of time, like you said, that you haven't... Um, uh, you have some cash in your portfolio that you manage or in maybe in your proprietary portfolio and maybe you bought some gold and all. But what is the trigger you're waiting for to pile on to more cash? Um, what is the trigger you're looking for? Because as you said, this is a scenario a scenario analysis. So there's a probability associated with this event. It's not that it's 100%. Obviously, nothing is 100% in a probability scenario analysis. So what is the trigger point that you're waiting for to load on to more cash? Uh, I see. Thanks. 
uh, for your kind words. So you know the articles that I write uh, have nothing to do with my investing. Uh, by like George Soros, they are uh, strong opinions, weakly held. They held very, they are very weakly. We are, uh, you know, we we run as per our systems, and we have uh, our uh, exit points, we have our entry points, we have our entry triggers, we have our exit triggers. So we just follow those. There are no particular patterns, or there are no particular uh, events that we are waiting for to happen. For for or we don't have any kind of thesis that we are saying that okay, if this plays out. Uh, like a discretionary investor would have, uh, and then we'll sort of uh, exit, or then we'll have, then we'll exit. We have, uh, uh, and like you rightly said, that you know, Nancy C M uh, had two Nobel laureates, and they sort of, I mean, they didn't, they didn't want to cut their losses. Is is what happened. And uh, but in equity markets, if you are right 51% of the time, which uh, Jim Simons is, you can do pretty well with risk management. So uh, you know that's what we do. We uh, if we are wrong, we cut we cut it pretty fast, and if we are right, we try to hold on to it as long as possible. That's simply how we do it. We don't. I mean, I'm, this uh, article, like I said, is just a thought experiment. It has nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with uh, you know how we are investing or how we are looking at investing. Yeah, thanks, Anish. But uh, yeah, uh, we have to thank you that at least you cautioned us. And as a risk manager, you uh, which you are, we have to think of all the possibilities, and we have to be careful because uh, even if the recession doesn't come or uh, a slowdown comes, the uh, coming months could be tough still, and the drawdowns could be big also. Uh, having said that, obviously no one can predict 100%. But thank you, yeah. Thanks, thank you. Okay, and now we have uh, Vipin, who's got uh, similar kind of targets as Anish. Uh, you can just ask Vipin to go ahead once on this thought. I think Prashant Malik is there. Prashant, you want to go ahead? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, sure. Sorry. Uh, sure, sure. Anish, quick question. Uh, why isn't uh, in the current scenario? Uh, why isn't uh, uh, why isn't it fixable by a simple uh, simple recession? Why, why why wouldn't a recession just uh, you know help us get out of the situation? Uh, how how will the recession help us get out of the situation? I don't know. I mean, how how is you say that basically? You will uh, have a recession. You'll have a demand shock. Your uh, and your economy contracts. How are you going to stimulate it back? You're already at zero percent. When when you have a recession, and you have to re-stimulate or reflate the economy, you see here what the Fed has done. They've already put their foot on the pedal. Then they've not let it off. You are at zero percent. How? I mean, then you'll have to go into negative territory. You'll have to go at uh, minus five or something. So how are you going to re-stimulate the economy when it goes into a recession? Yeah, I feel we already are in a pseudo recession kind of an environment where there is uh, the demand is already low, but as on the supply side there are too many issues. That is what we call a stagflation kind of environment, isn't it? No, I think I think he asked a good question. What you're saying is that look, uh, let things go as they are. If, if at hundred twenty dollars, hundred thirty dollars, if there is no demand for oil. Uh, the invisible hand of uh, Adam Smith will take uh, take care of things, and uh, you know uh, demand will adjust, supply will adjust, and the whole situation will come back to normal. Uh, but it doesn't happen that way because I mean the Fed has a role to play, and uh, when demand contracts to re-stimulate demand, you will need to cut interest rates, but. When you are at zero percent, how how are you going to cut it further from there? The Fed has no no place to go down further than they've already sunk. That is the that is the whole problem. That and that's one of the charts that I've given. That you know throughout the 2010s, uh, when they tried to sort of take the punch bowl or the drugs away from the drug addict, and the drug addict created a, created a tantrum, uh, they sort of gave it back, and then they gave back more. And and that was the, I think that is a mistake they made and that is I mean I don't blame them it's it's uh, you know that's how politicians are like somebody said that they think short term and they pass the can down uh, kick the can down the road and when it sort of you know how kids play passing the parcel then when the music stops it stops with somebody. Yeah. Nitin, why would you like to say something? 
विपिन गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग एक्चुअली काफी कनेक्शन कनेक्शन को लेकर इश्यू हो रहा था मुझे समझ में आया था कि मेरे साथ ही हो रहा है या बाकी सबके साथ हो रहा है मेरे साथ तो हो रहा है सर मेरे साथ तो हो रहा है ओके आपका टॉपिक देख रहा था मैं सर 1929 ये तो वो ग्रेट डिप्रेशन वाला है सर पीरियड या उससे अलग है कुछ वही है वही है वही है माय गॉड इसका नया नाम रख दें ग्रेट फ्रस्ट्रेशन अगला जो पीरियड आ रहा है क्योंकि डिप्रेशन जरूरी नहीं है ना कि हर बार डिप्रेशन ही रिपीट हो इस बार ग्रेट फ्रस्ट्रेशन ईयर वो एक साल हो दो साल हो तीन साल हो चार साल हो पांच साल हो कौन जानता है मेरे ख्याल से कोई नहीं जानता आवाज आ रही है अब एक आदमी आ रही है आ रही है सही बात है वो दादा दादी की कहानी वाली स्टाइल में ठीक लगता है बात करना मेरे को कोई हूँ हाँ करता रहा तो मुझे पता चलता वरना मुझे लगता है मैं ही खुद निकल ले मुझे कुछ ऐसा लग रहा है कि ये ग्रेट डिप्रेशन तो फिलहाल एकदम अलग पीरियड है उस समय का सिचुएशन पता नहीं क्या क्या था पूरा हिस्ट्री पार्ट मुझे नहीं पता है सब कुछ हाँ आज का हिस्ट्री पार्ट पूरा समझ में आ रहा है कि जो मेरे सामने चल रहा है जैसा रोज नया नया स्टोरी आ रहा है मैं जो देख रहा हूँ मेरा फोकस तो करेंसी पे सबसे ज्यादा है और ये जो इन्फ्लेशन जो अभी दिख रहा है ये तो मुझे सिर्फ ऐसा लग रहा है कि सब सप्लाई साइड का इश्यू है क्योंकि डिमांड तो कुछ नहीं है मुझे मुझे नहीं दिखती डिमांड से हर जगह सप्लाई है जैसे जैसे सप्लाई कहीं पर भी ब्लॉक हो रही है तो इन्फ्लेशन और तेज शूट हो रही है तो ये तो आर्टिफिशियल हो, हो गया है या सडनली मतलब हालात के कारण हो गया है जैसा भी सिचुएशन है बट ये तो सिर्फ ब्लॉक हुआ है सप्लाई तो मेरे ख्याल से कि इसके बाद जब अपनी भरपाई करने आएगी सप्लाई तो मेरे ख्याल से कहीं ऐसा ना हो कि वो इन्फ्लेशन से डिफ्लेशन की तरफ डीप में चली जाए कि भाई मेरा माल सब पड़ा हुआ था मैंने दो साल से बेच नहीं पाया था तो एक काम करो लो और लो और लो और लो तो हो सकता है कि हम डिफ्लेशन की तरफ चले जाएं आज हम हाइपर इन्फ्लेशन और हाई इन्फ्लेशन की बात कर रहे हैं मुझे जहां तक लगता है कि आज का जो माहौल है इसमें सबसे ज्यादा मुझे खराब लगता है करेंसियों का स्ट्रक्चर मुझे सारी करेंसी हद से ज्यादा इनबैलेंस दिखती है हद से ज्यादा इनबैलेंस दिखती है तो कुछ ऐसा जो भी जियो पोलिटिकल इश्यूज जो भी कंसर्न है ये पता नहीं किस डायरेक्शन में जाएगा आगे जिस तरफ से अभी बात कुछ और चल रही है हो सकता है कल को तुतु में मैं कुछ और भी हो जाए तो ये तो हमेशा हिस्ट्री में यही रहा है कि शुरुआत कहीं और से होती अंत कहीं और होता है अब कितना लंबा चलेगा कितना छोटा चलेगा ये कोई भी नहीं जानता हाँ मेन कंसर्न जो समझ में आ रहा है वो मुझे ये समझ में आता है कि करेंसी बहुत ज्यादा सारी करेंसियां बहुत ज्यादा इनबैलेंस है कमोडिटी uh, में जो इन्फ्लेशन है वो सप्लाई के रुकने से है कुछ लोग उसका फायदा भी उठा रहे होंगे और मर, अपनी मर्जी के चलो सप्लाई रोकते हैं और इक्विटी को लेके वैल्यूएशन uh, हम लोग सरद जी से समझते ही है तो वैल्यूएशन जरूरत से ज्यादा बहुत ही ज्यादा हाइपर वैल्युएशन पे स्टॉक्स ट्रेड कर रहे हैं तो मेरे ख्याल से इसका नाम द ग्रेट फ्रस्ट्रेशन पीरियड रखना चाहिए और ये एक साल में तो नहीं कभी खत्म होता क्योंकि फ्रस्ट्रेशन डिप्रेशन से ज्यादा खराब होता है तो माइट भी कि हम चार पांच साल के फ्रस्ट्रेशन पीरियड में जा रहे हैं सर सर मुझे इतना ही कहना था इससे ज्यादा मुझे स्टोरी आती नहीं बस बोलना सही है सही है क्योंकि जो करेंसी का इम्बैलेंस है वो बेसिकली जो यूएस ने जितना प्रिंट किया है और अब उनको जब ये बारी आ रही है कि ये ब्लोटेड कंपनी की जैसे बैलेंस शीट ब्लोट हो जाती है तब तो उसको आप रिस्ट्रक्चर कैसे करोगे कहीं ना कहीं तो पेन आता है कभी ना कभी तो वो कहीं ना कहीं निकलता है तो वैसा जैसे आप कह रहे हैं ग्रेट फ्रस्ट्रेशन वैसा हो सकता है हमने मतलब साइडवेज मार्केट हो जाए चाहे कुछ कुछ ना हो तो साइडवेज ही हो जाए uh but prashant coming to you uh, did did you did you complete the round on that did you get the answer uh, to what you are asking uh no you aren't audible Mm, looks like connection issues. Ah, 
I think uh, it's basically right, 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 frustration. Yeah, you can. I think he's joining back again. Yeah, uh, I think Ranvijay is uh, lined up. Ranvijay Singh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Anish. I just wanted to ask few things. See, isn't it quite fashionable uh, to, uh, you know, I am not say I am saying that I am bullish or I am bearish. What I am saying is, isn't it too becoming too fashionable to uh, associate any dips or any uh, situation with the the biggest and uh, bestest of the things? Isn't it more like making headlines? you know to uh, suggesting that it is like to uh, you know 1929 or something like that did we get that much stress out in terms of uh, from lows or uh, see after 29 that was the time say war another world war okay you can say world war might happen that time we went into globalization more if you look at the economies that was a the time then uh, when जो अपना इकोनॉमी सा सारा का सारा ग्लोबलाइजेशन स्टार्ट हुआ उसके बाद बाद में दैट वाज द रीजन कि हम डिप्रेशन से वापस भी बाहर आए हम मतलब एज इन द वर्ल्ड राइट नाउ ऑफ कोर्स वी हैव काइंड ऑफ स्टार्टेड एवरीबॉडी डूइंग और ट्राइंग टू बी मोर सेल्फ सफिशिएंट विपिन सेड अबाउट करेंसीज ऑफ कोर्स दैट इज वन बिग पार्ट ऑफ इट बिकॉज़ करेंसीज वर टू इंटरडिपेंडेंट एंड everybody is now trying to save their own things but but you know all said and done you know we might compare or uh, frustrated part we can discuss say probably the japanese indexes after the 80s the highs of uh, 80s and then staying on the lower side not reaching those levels but comparing each and everything or any day you know for last 15 uh, 20 years or even 30 years any any dip or any big correction or any bear market why why is it just been compared to the uh, mother of all you know that that, that is my yeah, yeah, concern I, yeah i got your question ranveer okay so uh, uh, i don't know if you uh, how, how when did you start investing ranveer this uh, uh, more than 10 Uh, 10 15 years but uh, uh, family wise uh, has had a uh, much uh, longer history longer history in terms yeah. of so yeah. you've seen but it is, it is it is it not yeah we have seen lot of uh, things we uh, we have seen uh, those uh, paper certificates being actually paper only uh, sure. that that part has been seen Uh, and uh, it is yeah. it is uh, so in terms of investing it is not just your uh, you know your equities and other things or gold and it, yeah. it is it it, it does include your uh, lands and other assets also yeah yeah, yeah. see so inflation so, so what, what yeah, so everything what, matters yeah, yeah, yeah. No, correct so so what we you know now see in um, in 2000 see, anish why i am asking you is you are asking my background in terms of those things but uh, are they pertinent are you why listen i, Anish, I am asking one thing context. listen listen why yeah. are they pertinent to the question i am asking so let him answer the question right just one second no Can because he cross question that's why i said i think nothing less there it's okay ranveer okay. let's uh, okay uh, um, maybe uh, i mean i okay. let, let, let's uh, uh, call it time uh, out and uh, anish please no, okay. uh, probably what about a reason sir, uh, uh, Senator, there is nothing like uh, time. I'm just asking uh, why. No, no, I understand. I understand, Ranveer. I'm, I'm sure he'll answer. I'm sure he'll answer. I would have given a longer context, or then I would have given a shorter answer. That is the only reason why I asked. There was nothing, no casting aspersions on anyone's. Uh, no, no, I'm not uh, saying you are asking. I'm saying why? How does the answer uh, differentiate in that? Even Because a layman can would, ask that, then and then I would have explained what was. Then I would have started with 2008, and I would have gone back to 2000. If you've seen, already seen 2000 and 2008, then I yeah. will not explain 2000 and 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. That but is the, why. But, but there will be a lot of people who might not have seen those, who are listening to us. That's fine, but you are asking the question, so I my job yeah. is to answer your question, not for all right, else. all right. Sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So we started. We started with a problem in 2008. Then to stimulate the economy, you had to do quantitative easing. So QE one was important. I don't think QE two and three were important. That was the time when the Fed should have tightened 
and gone back so that then you would have space to cut now if required and when we go into a recession. Now the problem is that you have given more drugs to a drug addict. Now tell me what happens when you keep on going on, going on, giving more and more and more drugs to a drug addict. At some point in time, it breaks down, right? It's like dopamine rushes. At some point, you keep needing a bigger and bigger and bigger dose of dopamine to satisfy to get the same kick. That's the same thing that's happened to the US economy. You got QE1, QE2, QE3, and then QE4, which was four times that. The Fed balance sheet is now at 125 or 30 percent of GDP. That is why we are saying that it is an inflection point. It is not like any normal period that in, in history that we've seen something of this sort. Uh, I hope you got the answer. And the answer lies in the context that we have been seeing. Yeah, yeah in, in a bit, in terms that there are a lot of uh, countries who might have gone for those things and uh, similar situations happened. Uh, as a country, I don't think so. We went into those. But you uh, again, I'm saying uh, we are going from globalization to more of a deglobalization or more, be, uh, more like into camps. So uh, maybe some countries might get affected more, some might get affected less uh, going forward. Decoupling can, can happen. If we are decoupling in terms of uh, currencies or camps and other things happening, can happen. We already have had, uh, if you are saying in that way, is, uh, the ill effects of, uh, you know, uh, currencies and other things happening or these things. We already have had defaults of lot many countries as such, you know. It is not that we do, didn't have those. We might ha come up with a lot of other organizations coming in uh, in place of a uh, lot of organizations which we think right now are... Uh, central to the world economy or world order as such. But sure, anyway, but that's your, your, your period of readjustment, which will any period of readjustment comes with a lot of pain. It does sure, not sure, sure. Seamlessly yeah, yeah. smoothly. Pain. Anything so, has so to even in growing. Gain, it is pain. Somebody will lose. Like e even with growth. Woods, yeah, the US even. was uh, on the gold standard. 1971, they went off the gold standard. Suddenly, they said that you know we are not going to have gold backing the dollar. Then they went went into fiat currency. Now again, it may go. They may want. They may try and go back to you know something uh, you know more sensible. See, you can they, have a basket they, they, of currency. So, see, again, so again, yeah. Happen. When what they what when they left, is that there could be a, a period of pain and a period of readjustment. Whatever historical context we saw, when we are not saying 1929 or 1920s just to create headlines and just to create something of that sort. See, it is see, a, when, when, you, you uh, okay, Anish, when when when. Anish, when uh, US went off from gold standards, there were context to it and nobody questioned it from their side. Maybe from the other side, people might have questioned, but they were not listened to it. Do you think uh, things changing right now? Uh, people see one of the biggest things right now, uh, which concerns more is the kind of sanctions the same put on Russia. That is more concerning than a lot of other things happening. When uh, you control the or uh, ask them or uh, you withhold their, uh, you know, central bank funds or your, or their gold and other things, this kind of thing has never happened, never, ever, okay, ever I, happened. I, I referred to a, uh, yeah, yeah, I referred to that and uh, I referred yeah. to a podcast, uh, which you should listen to by Grant Williams and Luke Gorim, where they're referring to this. Uh, same thing what happened two weeks ago and they equate this to the happening of the US going on the gold standard. In fact, the US wants people not to buy US treasuries. They want people to go out of US treasuries so that they can take their, uh, they can devalue the dollar and they can start manufacturing and start exporting again. In fact, that is what the US Department of Defense wants. Wall Street does not want that. Yeah, yeah. And that is yeah. the fight that and, is going on internally it, between it, them. Yeah, but this paper uh, of uh, devaluation of dollar is from the Trump time. I don't know about how much this uh, uh, government, present government is looking at it. That, that paper was published or uh, discussed more in the Trump time. Yeah, beyond the point, it will see, you have debt. Debt is backed by gold, gold and or it is backed by or petrodollars. Yeah. Because everybody needs energy and the world is willing to accept dollars. Tomorrow the world's 
uh, you know stocks except in dollars what happens you will uh, we'll have a if we have a direct connection with uh, russia and instead we they say we'll accept money in, in rupees so you know slowly that the the dollar starts losing its uh, value right and that's what the us wants at this point in time yeah thank you so kind of you for answering thank thanks you a lot. thanks a lot for thank giving you. me a chance abhishek kindly uh, no take no off problem. me from the abhishek i would just like to chip in one word am i allowed yes yeah, sir please 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 okay. Okay. it's on a lighter way and let's not forget one thing everybody in the house seems to be talking of you know markets going down so as stanley rakan miller says the obvious in the market will obviously not work my question is what if it goes to 18000 Everybody, if the crowd is on one side, the market seldom will go there. Yeah, that I was reading an article. An article where what happens if peace breaks out? We always talk of war breaking out. What happens if peace breaks out? Is anybody prepared for that? For that? <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I titled it. Huh? So then we will call this the dead cat bounce. In the end, we'll call it the yeah, last. Yeah, we are the last we are storytelling animals. We will tell stories to ourselves. We rationalize it. Uh, you know, there was this. Cult in the 1950s or something, which said the world is going to come to an end, or some mm. marjaying, a fifth Kriveti Machega, and uh, you know the this UFC. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so then you know that world obviously didn't come to an end. So that cult said, now what happened? Then they changed the story. He said, no, no, we were praying. That's why mm. the world was saved. That's and why also, the world didn't come to an end. Sorry, so, we will not make any story. We will not make any story. Bilkul. Also, let's not forget the biggest money is always made on the surprise side. The losses have happen on the obvious side, and I think you know after having heard for over now, the obvious side is very imminent. Where it will go is anybody's guess. Nobody knows. Let's accept that. Very That's clear. why I said strong opinions weekly held. Weekly held. Yeah. Absolutely. Where even the top guy, whether it be Stan, George Soros, or Warren Buffett, nobody has the clue, right? We all go by. I mean, what the thing. But the only thing is, you know, there is also a surprise element where most of the time you make the biggest money, and it always takes everybody by surprise. The recent Absolutely. example is 2020 on the downside and on the upside. Thanks, Abhishek, for giving me a chance to talk. Thank you. Yeah, I think SK wants to say something. SK, please go on. Yeah, sorry, I got disconnected. My phone got discharged. Uh, no, I want to just uh, respond uh, earlier to what I had said. Uh, when I was comparing uh, the uh, SGST and the CGST, I wanted to just uh, clarify that uh, I was taking the last seven months and not the last three months. Uh, so it's a fairly uh, decent seven to eight months. So it's a fairly decent representation of the financial year itself. The second point I wanted to make is that our, our WPI, while I did mention it's quite high at thirteen percent, bear in mind that the base was still positive. On the thirteen uh, percent, when you take a uh, you know a two-year uh, thing, so it's not like it was a negative base. So, so to that extent, uh, you know, it's a, a pretty glaring number. Um, and I also want to draw your attention about uh, you know some some aspects. Right? I mean, I was looking at the uh, you know average realized uh, realized uh, vehicle per vehicle sold by you know Hero Honda, which. Caters to the uh, poorer class of society, and their average re- realization per school, uh, you know, vehicle sold by Hero Motor Corp, uh, you know, has gone up from about forty-four thousand a unit to about sixty through sixty-three thousand a unit, something like that, or maybe sixty thousand a unit, but roughly about forty percent over a period of two years. uh you know that that's pretty significant if you ask me it puts a lot of pressure and this is by the way doesn't even include things like insurance that have gone up quite a bit uh, it does not include any other you know uh, the obviously the one thing that has clearly come down is the cost of financing but eventually that will reverse um uh yeah i mean at this moment of time i guess whoever is bearish is going to be wrong tonight because crude has crashed Although I still, uh, um, you know, have a view that crude will eventually go up to, you know, some crazy levels, uh, because I think uh, the destruction with this entire episode that has happened, I think the world has changed forever. And why do I say the world has changed forever? Is because now uh, every country is going to start uh, deglobalization will reverse, and every country is going to now start their own manufacturing supply chain. 
there's going to be the east and there's going to be the west um china for the last 20 20 15 20 25 years has been effectively uh, helping the world uh, to run an uh, to run a deflationary cycle in some sort of sense uh, because of the scale at which they work uh, that's going to reverse clearly uh, if you look at crude oil uh, what's interesting is that for the first time in since the opening of the entire industry crude oil industry the year 2020 and the year 2021 saw capex by the top 40 enp companies being below de, uh, uh, you know below uh, what do you say depreciation it's never never happened before where the cost capex is below depreciation for two consecutive years uh, and it is at least 30 to 40 percent lower than what it was pre-covid uh, and uh, you know the biggest drivers of crude oil consumption in the world are china and india and uh, i think that's going to con- if if we believe that these two countries are going to grow and you know penetration of vehicles continues to rise there is uh, there is no way that i see that uh, crude oil demand is going to fall it's going to only rise despite evs in fact it's interesting that ev sales in china have kind of slowed down a little bit um and uh, the big question mark now is actually that you know the raw material prices for batteries are actually going up substantially and uh, you know it puts a big question at such low volumes it puts a big question mark on you know the entire concept of evs and green energy but the bottom line is that uh, inflation is going to be very very sticky world over and there was a very interesting thing that I came across uh, when the EC, there was a lady on Twitter who put out a no, uh, you know, a Twitter saying, pleading to the ECB, you know what, rates are so high. Uh, I mean, inflation of my of property is so high, I cannot afford to buy a house. I was very surprised that one of the board members of the ECB actually replied to her on Twitter uh, in a blue tick handle saying that, listen, I hear you, I understand that uh, you know uh, that prices of real estate have gone and become unaffordable we need to correct that i think nobody could have said it more clearly and uh, the second thing is that while i know there is an argument saying that you know if markets correct it's bad for the economy no it's not because uh, uh, the a large part of the wealth that's been created uh, world over has gone to the top 5 or 10% uh, the remaining 80-90% have actually relatively become poorer because of very sticky inflation. And I, I think there, there, there is, we haven't even seen social unrest. Uh, my view is that social unrest will be severe this year. And that that will put further pressure on uh, the central US central bank and maybe even the ECB to go ahead and raise rates. The important thing that one needs to keep in mind, the la- this is my last point, is that the US dollar is actually uh, uh, everybody shot the US dollar. And the reason why everybody shot the US dollar effectively is because, and if you refer to the Bank of International Settlements, they give you that figure of about 15 trillion odd. And the reason why everybody shot the US dollar is because pretty much if you look at the borrowing of most uh, commercial banks in Europe, in Japan, in US, uh, and in uh, you know international funding, even the Australian banks, uh, all of them borrow in U.S. dollars, which is one one of the reasons why they, they you generally find, uh, there is this concept that the world is shot the U.S. dollar in some sort of sense. I uh, and and in a risk aversion cycle, and if you, you know uh, inflation in U.S. picks continues to pick up, rates in U.S. continue to go up, money will flow back to the U.S., making the U.S. dollar stronger. Uh, so that that's what I wanted to just say. Yeah, Anish, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Abhishek, can you get uh, Sriram sir up if you can? Maybe you can. If he has space, we can. Yeah, I'll send him a request. Yeah, Sriram, are you there? Vijay, uh, you want to end in five, ten minutes? Yeah, Anish. Yeah, maybe Sriram's will be the last question and then we can close it. So I'm not able to see uh, any of you kind of thing. I'm operating blindly, but uh, okay, yeah, okay. that you mentioned Sriram. Yeah, I'll close. Once you answer his question, we'll close it. No problem. 
I've sent you a request, Shilam, sir. Can you please accept it? SK, I can see you. Kindly, can you mute yourself, please? I think he's muted already. Okay. Shilam is not able to answer. Uh, Anish, uh, I can yeah. close it. Shall we close it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. May I thank you uh, for coming and uh, talking to us and uh, giving us uh, various facets of what your article was. And uh, I know mm, uh, this room is full of uh, it's a slightly a negative kind of uh, mm, sentiment, uh, but nevertheless, uh, negative or positive, you have shown a mirror to us in more ways than one. Uh, thank you, Praveen, uh, for contributing to the discussion and thanks Prashant uh, uh, who's not here at this point of time and uh, may I also thank uh, Vipin uh, Bhai, um, CG, uh, uh, KTP and uh, SK, SK spoke uh, uh, quite a few interesting things um, and uh, Kirit Mandral sir. Uh, so let's hope that uh, uh, we are all wrong and uh, let's hope the market goes up. So I'm sure all of us are investors uh, at the core. Absolutely. So, we all make money yeah. when the market goes up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we also have investments. None of us are, you know, uh, uh, I mean, bereft of any investments in the market. So it helps us if the market uh, goes finally at the end of the day. And uh, let's meet uh, soon. And uh, uh, last but not the least, Abhishek, uh, you conducted it, uh, moderated it very well. Thank you very much, Abhishek. Uh, so uh, we'll all see you soon.